Hi, Libra. Welcome to your February 2018. I was going to say love reading, but uh, this is actually an astral update. And the reason I was going to say a love reading is because if you're looking for love, it doesn't get much better than uh, this month, Libra. And usually Librans are looking for love. You know, you are ruled by Venus and you're, you rule the seventh house of committed partnership. So you're looking for that special someone. And uh, sometimes you're looking for uh, him or her when you're currently in a relationship. If you feel let down and uh, like your current relationship isn't working out. So the reason I'm saying that there's so much love vibes going around is because Aquarius is your fifth house of romance. Now you ruled the seventh house and that deals with a committed partnership. So that's the next stage of things. But when you're talking about falling in love, you're talking about the fifth house. And um, so for you, that's Aquarius. And there's a lot of Aquari Aquarian energy that is happening in February. So let me just um, start by setting the table and talking about that super moon, blood moon, blue moon, total lunar eclipse, which happens to be a full moon. Uh, all lunar eclipses are actually powerful full moons in Leo on January 31st at 11 degrees of Leo. Now, for Libra, this is your 11th house. So that's kind of auspicious too. The number 11 seems to be um, very important for you. So if you look at it as 1111, which you may have seen all over the place, um, that's like a portal, okay? And on the 31st of January, this fall falling of the eclipse in your 11th house could be that something that you have wanted and wished for for a very long time is finally coming to pass. And but don't get hung up on that date because the eclipses can have um, long term influences. In other words, it might not be on the 31st of January that these things actually happen. It might be later on. Sometimes people experience it before the actual date. So that's what we're coming into February with. And Mars is going to be in Sagittarius all month long. This is in your third house of communication. So um, the third house is also your local area and your neighbors, but it can be your siblings. So brothers and sisters and cousins. And I, I don't know whether what other extend, extended family that the third house uh, represents, but uh, with Mars, there could be conflict. So you might be um, possibly arguing about something. And now, you know, you do have Capricorn energy. That's your fourth house. You have um, Saturn having gone into that fourth house. And Pluto has been there for 10 years. So uh, let me set the stage for you. Y your mother, because the fourth house can be the mother, but let's just say your parents, they need help. And you are the consummate yes man. <laughs> if somebody asks you to do something, you'll go, okay. And then you're like, I don't want to do this. Well, how come they can't do it? How come I'm always one that does this? And you feel sorry for yourself because you have a hard time saying no, Libra. So um, maybe you've been taking care of your parents. Now, this would be a n recent occurrence because Saturn just went into Capricorn in December. So just like a month ago. Um, and you might be like, how come they don't have to share this, this uh, responsibility, because Saturn is about duty and responsibility. But you may be f feeling a bit irked at siblings that you feel are dropping the ball about this. So that's happening for you. Um, you may just be like very intent on some sort of um, communication, uh, a project that involves communication or the internet. Mars can indicate a lot of activity in this area. 
So let's get to the good stuff about love. Venus, your ruler, um, is in Aquarius, your fellow air sign. So that forms a trine, which makes the energy flow very easily in that fifth house of love until the 10th, when it goes into your sixth house, which is a totally different type of energy and involves um, health and the, your, your coworkers, your, your office and, and your daily routine. And that's much more practical. But uh, the fifth house is definitely romantic. And for the first 10 days, you have it, you have uh, Venus there. So you could be crushing on someone. And then um, that's on the 10th. And when it goes into the sixth house, but then on the 15th, you have the the new moon, which happens to be a solar eclipse in Aquarius. So that's going to be in that fifth house. So look to a new relationship that is you know, you could look at it as faded because of the the fact that it's an eclipse rather than a typical new moon, where it just, it seems to drop from the sky, okay? And this may be your soulmate, you never know. So um, just, if you're looking for somebody for a serious relationship, keep your eyes and ears open in the next six months or so. And, and, you know, when I say drop from the sky, I'm actually being facetious because you do want to participate in your own life and you do want to engage. Um, I think that that is where predictions go awry because if the person isn't doing what they need to do, it isn't going to drop from the sky. So I don't even know why I said that. But I think that I, I will say one thing. I think that when you're talking about trines, you're talking about something that is very um, easy to manifest. And actually, in addition to that, um, the very fact that it's a solar eclipse means it's almost like a, a tsunami wave just coming in of bringing the universe bringing you something new. So then on the 17th, Mercury goes into Pisces. So again, we're talking about the fifth to the sixth house. And then you may be more in that mode of work related matters and thinking about, or maybe even thinking about diet. Okay. But until the 17th, you have Mercury in that fifth house. So you may be talking to someone that you feel a strong emotional a connection to with Venus in that house, like a romantic connection. And then on the very next day, the same thing, the sun is going from your fifth house of romance to your sixth house of work. And so it's almost like you have your fun and then you're getting down to business. By the way, if you're somebody who's in a committed relationship and you're not interested in falling in love, the fifth house can either be your home business or it can be your creative endeavors. And if you're an artist, this could also uh, be a great time because you may be very creative, but you also may be making money from your creations because Venus entering a house can indicate that money is connected there. And, and in the fifth house, it could be related to some of your creative endeavors. So th that's very exciting, Libra. I hope that, um, if you are looking for love that you uh, find it. And um, so good luck to you. If you'd like a personal reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have a very romantic and uh, peaceful February. Bye.